And just given just this kind of tilt towards these pro-growth policies uh, from the PBOC, do you think monetary easing offsets the, the regulatory risk that we're seeing in China right now? Hi there. Uh, good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty clear now. The signals are all there that monetary easing, but broader policy easing is underway in China. Uh, we saw initial signs of that even as late back as the fall, uh, but with the December triple R cut and now cuts to the policy rate, it looks like uh, things are moving forward at a faster rate now. Uh, our baseline for the moment is that it's going to take a few months before we see the economic effects of this. So we're still expecting broader activity to be relatively weaker in the first half of the year before starting to pick up pace in the second half of the year. Andrew, hold on a second here. Just want to break uh, the renminbi fix that's just crossing here. Uh, that fix set at 634.11. That is just slightly weaker than the 634.07, according to a survey here this morning. But of course, we've been talking about that uh, level of 633, where we did see back in December, the PBOC did intervene. Uh, Andrew, let, let's talk a little bit more about just the whole policy diversions that, that we are seeing from the PBOC and the Fed. Um, it, it's been a while since we have seen these two central banks go in such opposite directions. Do you think that there needs to be something that – is there a concern, I guess, for the market uh, and what this could actually mean? Are, are there more measures that need to be, placed, to be put in place to prevent some more systemic risks? Well, as, as it pertains to the currency, I guess there's a couple of factors at play, and uh, there are rightfully uh, quite a debate going on in terms of the direction of the renminbi this year. Uh, here at Fitch, uh, we do expect there to be a, a, a modest appreciation this year. We have the, the currency going to 6.7. Uh, the key theme there, in our view, is, is that of uh, policy divergence, monetary policy divergence, with the Fed hiking this year. And we still expect the PBOC to uh, cut the pol policy rate again during the first quarter of this year. Uh, but I guess the broader backdrop, which I think um, is, is, is a certainly worth taking note of, is that China's external balances continue to strengthen. Uh, exports are still strong. The current account balance is the strongest it's been in for quite some time. So all those are, are, are certainly buffers, external buffers that are supporting the currency uh, uh, from a fundamental perspective as well. Andrew, David here, and I guess just back to the previous point of, uh, of Yvonne on just this policy shift, and arguably that's down to what's been happening in the property sector. And I want to get your thoughts on how you guys sort of quantify off-balance sheet debt. And certainly we've seen that come uh, and bite some of these developers. You know, a lot of these claimants, I guess, with a lack of a better phrase, come out and, uh, you know, coming out of the woodwork and asking for money. And, and I'm wondering... You know, from, from, from your perspective, when you try and rate the risk of the country, and certainly just given the economic, let's put it this way, economic system in China, it, one in which you, I guess, directly assume a little bit more uh, as far as the obligations of the state as it pertains to F balance, whether that's directly on a local government level or indirectly because of stimulus right now, how are you guys approaching what isn't easily as quantifiable in terms of the debt risk? No, well, I think you've you've summarized it very well. Uh, the opacity is still quite high um, in China's economy, though I, I, I have I must admit that in recent years, uh, a lot of the fiscal easing that was prior previously done during uh, previous stimulus periods off balance sheet is now coming on balance sheet, uh, particularly through these. Uh, local government special bonds that are used to fund infrastructure. Uh, so more activity is happening on balance sheet. But there is still a lot of activity which is difficult for us to quantify and to capture. Uh, the way in the sovereign ratings group that we try to reflect this is that we do have a one-notch adjustment uh, downwards on China's rating. Uh, the, the rating right now is A+, plus, uh, but we have a, mm. uh, a one-notch one, one negative adjustment to reflect some of these macro financial risks and the broader story of large mm. debt levels across the broader economy. Andrew, just to talk about Hong Kong now and the containment strategy as far as the virus is concerned, I guess in a lot of ways always means slower growth 
and potentially more government handouts is always on the table. Do you expect the government to, I guess, quite, almost quite literally hand out more money uh, to sectors or to citizens? Well, I wouldn't want to uh, forecast the specific uh, policy solution that the authorities are contemplating, but it's pretty clear that mm. with the restrictions now, initially they were going to be two weeks, and now it looks like uh, then they were going to be four weeks, and now it looks like it's going to be quite a bit longer. So I think against that backdrop, it's pretty clear that the authorities are going to use more fiscal support measures to uh, to support people that have been impacted by these recent shutdowns. Uh, I guess maybe one point there is that Hong Kong still does have a very large fiscal reserve. I think in our estimates, it's about 25 to 30 percent of GDP. Uh, and this is the kind of rainy day fund that is precisely uh, for a external shock like the one we're experiencing now. So I think there, there are the fiscal buffers available for the authorities to use them should they so choose.